<laughs> and this is why I love roleplay, guys. <laughs> Looks like it. So I'm going to apologize in advance about the fact that uh, for some reason uh, they decided to not worry about the... Probably about uh, a fourth or fifth of the, the tokens in this campaign are just a disc with a name of a monster and it doesn't look like, doesn't have a picture on it. So just so you know in advance. I mean, I guess I, I could download okay. a picture and put it on there. Got the monster manual. Yeah, most of the most of the 5e campaigns in here do the same thing. Yeah, they well, don't take the time to to, to put actual tokens. That's kind of lame. I mean, they they have some of the or creatures have pictures, but not all of them. And they're they're like original. They're not they're not like a, it's not like a you know a, an orc or something yeah. like that. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Dragon Heist. Um, is this just a regular door, or is it another series? Well, it's uh. As uh, these are double doors of beaten bronze, so they're worked to resemble a uh, forest of seaweed. Okay. Can we see any um, like handle or? Way to open them. Um, there is a way to open them. We would say the uh, doors just push inward. You don't really need a handle. Okay. Is well, everybody ready? Made it this far. I'm ready to go on. It's not like we can go back any face. <laughs> Talking about the, the 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 doors are still open. I permanently fixed that. We can we can go back. She just kind of looks at Sinclair. What uh, do you say? On three. Yeah. One. One. Two. Three. Push the door. And then Sinclair goes on four, while Sarah goes on three. <laughs> <laughs> Your three or my three? You said after three. Uh, one, two, three, go. No, one, two, go. This room is constructed of large stone blocks uh, buttressed in the corners. Uh, the uh, walls are wet and slimy, as you can tell as you're brushing up against them. And mud covers most of the floor in a thin coating. To the east and west may be seen stone doors recessed in the wall. And to the north, a set of stairs leads down. In the center of the chamber, chamber sits a large polished boulder amid a pile of smaller rounded rocks. The boulder is five feet tall and colored brown with dark streaks and spots. Leaning against it in what appears to be a bamboo st is what appears to be a bamboo staff. And the mud around the base of the boulder is a moving shape, looking like a uh, crayfish. It is face you is facing you. And it uh, seems to be aware of your presence. Uh, hello? Uh, this mud, just so you know, is a difficult terrain. So, you uh, said that covered the entire chamber, right? Yeah. So, okay. uh, Zarish and Sinclair, that took 10 movement point to get to where you're at. Looking, looking at the boulder, can I see any location where it could have fell from or rolled from? Uh, I want to. Darren wants to look and see if there's any anywhere that maybe the uh, the boulder might have fell from, or um, like a holes in the ceiling around the wall or something like. Basically, trying to see how the boulder would have gotten. Um, roll a uh, nature check. Don't 
don't know much. You don't pick up on. <laughs> you don't really pick up on anything. You don't see any crevices or missing chunks of rock uh, from the ceiling. Okay. I, I think this uh, room was built around that boulder right there. Just saying. That it's some kind of magic boulder. No, it's natural. Natural free ranged boulder that the cellos built around. Well, it's not a rock. Got to be a special rock. So I see you have all have all migrated towards the room there. You said this thing's looking at us. Um, this guy here advances. And he is waving uh, big claws in an impressive manner. Um, he's speaking in a language that none of you understand. But he is speaking to you. This is certainly new. Um, she just kind of waves at it and you know, just kind of waves at it if we can uh, spend if we can wait 10 minutes I can uh, cast uh, comprehend languages I, I think that perhaps let's uh, make sure we're by the door maybe just try to communicate you know it's not to make any more uh Actions that would appear threatening. Aggressive. We might as well just file out of the room before we start the ritual. I have a feeling that if we just walk out, it would be. Well, for one, it's a little rude. Insulting? Yes. Can you understand me? It's Sorry, just waving its claws and speaking. It, it, you don't know if it's saying, sure, I understand you, or, or hell no, I don't understand the word you're saying. Press the talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Move close up and down if yes, or side to side if no. You understand that. He just continues waving his arms and speaking in some strange language. Take that as a no. Okay, okay. let's back up for the uh, comprehend uh, the language. I'm not gonna turn around, but I am gonna back up to the door and just kind of put my finger up and like, one moment. <clears throat> so, how long does this take? Ten minutes. Uh, ten minutes. I think 11 if you include the casting. It takes like a minute to cast. Yeah. Well, uh, no, it's just one action. I mean, we've been through a lot of stuff. Um, it didn't attack us right that way. Um, uh, do you think it won't attack us for 10 minutes? It's worth a try. Unless you want to fight this thing. I mean, I didn't want to fight anything. When we came down here, it seemed like everything wanted to fight us. Ah, uh, travel. Isn't it glorious? 
So do you guys uh, you guys wait for ten minutes and cast it or what? Yeah. I would rather I would rather wait. I think I, I would rather not fight it if we had if we had the choice. In hearing uh, her say, you know, give me ten minutes. Uh, Zara's just isn't gonna start anything. She's just gonna like watch the creature and try to. I'm I'm trying to discern what it is now. Taking ten minutes to try to discern what it is and what it's trying Look, to looks say. Looks like a giant crayfish. Just a tri- giant crayfish, no, like armor or any kind of symbol or anything on it. Because Zarish is a little intrigued about a giant creature just nonchalantly wanting to chat. Might not be wanting to chat. But that's what I did for It did. It did advance on you, Zarish and Sinclair, and still talking and waving its arms. But it did have the opportunity to attack, right? Um, sure. I would say several times. But it has So we I mean, could say ten minutes have passed if you guys uh, didn't have anything planned to do during that time. I want to cast okay. uh, the detect magic of the ritual for ten minutes. Okay. I'm over here trying to communicate with it and taking out a ration. You know, trying to offer it some. <laughs> okay, so you take some beef jerky or something and toss it I, in there. I, well, I eat a piece first and I basically offer it to him, to it. So this is um, uh, Zerish that uh, you cast Comprehend Languages, is that right? No, uh, that's Vivish. That's Vivace. Before before you do that, uh, Vivace, if you if you'd like, I could probably fix your arm up a little bit. Looks uh, not very well taken care of. I would, I would, that would be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do uh, do mending. Just kind of while they're country on their spell, just kind of do mending on the worst parts of the armor. Okay, as you do that, the uh, tears and uh, and scratches and rips and things in the armor and in certain areas that he's focusing on kind of mend themselves a little bit. And uh, Bavachi, you've completed casting that for your ten minutes. You guys notice that as the time is going by, your breathing is getting a little, a little more, a little more difficult. We need to hurry. I thought there was just a lack of food or something. <laughs> so you finished uh, casting that, but uh, keep in mind you're back here, and this creature is uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet away down this uh, hot muddy okay. hall and you got a bunch of people in between you so you probably want to get up a little closer where I might be able to hear yeah. you. I move up uh, behind Zarish and kind of I guess roll 20 can't do it but kind of peek around her and say and uh, just listen to the creature. I don't think it can understand me but. As you are uh, as your spell kicks into action you suddenly the, the th- words that he's saying suddenly become clear and you start understanding what they're saying although nobody else can understand it but uh, uh, the creature goes who is this who dares to enter the chamber of the guardian you had better go or I will have to discharge my sacred duty be off with you before I lose my temper 
Oh, this is not good. He is a... He says he's a guardian and uh, that he will do his duty to keep us from entering his chamber. Ask if there's other way out. Yeah, oh, no, I, I can't. Um, with uh, Comprehend Languages, I can't. Uh, can you post that in there? Because um, I kind of wondering if um, maybe you could actually speak it as well. Let's see, I... Uh, See, I, the uh, roll twenty doesn't have the uh, the ritual spells for the bard in the spell page. I post in Discord. So for the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. You also understand any written language you can see, but you must be touching the surface uh, on which the words are written. It takes about one minute to read one page of text. The spell does not decode secret messages in the text or a glyph, such as an arcane sigil, that it isn't a part of the written language. So I would say you could probably... I don't know, so it's up to the DM on how to interpret that. But I think there's actually spells that unless you allow you to... That's a cantrip. No, that's... What level is that? It's first level. For this instance, uh, yes, uh, you you are able to uh, speak back to it. You're able to able to uh, you assembled kind of the uh, dialogue and how the rhythms work and things like that. And it also sounds somewhat familiar in that these uh, omen creatures uh, that that were attacking you and the ones with the sharpened fangs—that's the language that he is speaking. Okay, um, then I say to it. Um, we are, we are trapped down here. We, uh, the root, the floor collapsed beneath us and, and we fell into here and now we are looking for the exit. Do you know, could you please, uh, tell us where that is? He just kind of, uh, he walks over this way and points in this direction. Okay. Um, so, what did he say? He, uh, well, I asked him where the exit was, and I guess he is, I, I mean, if he's telling the truth, then it would be in that direction. He kind of starts, like, marching back and forth over here. I think we should go. It seems like he's guarding something else. We should probably be very careful moving around. Stay close to the walls, if anything. I'm just watching them as I'm letting people go by. The others don't get left behind. Um, not in this place, no. I'd rather not die in this place. And this door you're able to uh, push open if you wanted to.
I'm All not right. gonna lie, I'm a little curious about what he was guarding. Sinclair will push it open. Okay. Bye, Lars. I'll wait for everybody to get through. It's another hallway. As I'm walking by, I'm just kind of rubbing my back. And if, uh, if the door pushed in, or, yeah, if the bo door pushed into the hallway, I'm gonna wait till Lars gets in and close the door behind us. Okay. Lars is bringing up the rear as usual. What's this? Is this a door? Um, I'll tell you about it here in just a second. The walls of this corridor are wet and slimy. The stucco covering has become saturated with water and is decomposing and sloughing off in spots on the southern wall, exposing the seams of one of the large stone blocks from which this structure was built. Well, it looks like this, uh, well, I don't know, does it look like this could be a, 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 a doorway? Or maybe a secret doorway of some kind? Well, what does up here? Oh, never mind, it's just my tunnel. What'd you say about this right here again? I can see through the through the cracks a little bit, and it looks like there is um, a space beyond this beyond this uh, this stone. Uh, look, so look where I'm standing. What'd you say about the stone, DM? Uh, the walls of the corridor are wet and slimy. The stucco covering has become saturated with water and is decomposing and sloughing off in spots on the southern wall, exposing the seams of one of the large stone blocks from which this structure was built. So, does this stone looks like it's movable? Like it was meant to move? Well, only one way to figure out. I'm going to, uh, I want to push a stone. I'm walking away. <laughs> um, uh, the stone seems very heavy. Um, it, you can hear it kind of like, maybe you can tell it might be able to be moved, but you don't. You don't think that you have the strength to do it, at least not by yourself. Um, and you take a point of acid damage on your hands from uh, from pushing on the stone. And it's got this uh, slimy stuff on your hands. Uh, do we really want to see what's behind door number one? Or... It, it, it burns, this acid or something on it. Is the stuff that burned him covering the walls or and the floor or just the walls? Yeah, the walls and... Uh, I guess mostly you'd say the walls. Is it oozing down the walls or is it just on the wall? The stucco coverings become saturated with water and is decomposing and sloughing off in spots on the southern wall exposing the seams of one of the large stone blocks from which this structure was built. 
So it's all on this southern wall there. If we want to uh, move this this stone, I could uh, I could use my music to inspire, and I I mean it magically uh, helps with um, something that you need to do. Is there, is there we, need to, we need to be careful because I uh, it's uh. It, the, the, the stone itself, the Maranovis, the Maranovis, it, uh, it will burn you. Can I press? Did, did, did you take the acidic stuff off the stone? It beat me to it. Yeah, there's some kind of acid on the stone. It, it burned my hands a little bit. And I'll show my hands. I was going to put my shield on my back, and as I reach up with both my hands, I was going to cast Prestigitation on the spot where I'm going to touch the stone and around it to where I can get a good push. You can uh, you can try to do that if you want. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll try. I will assist. <clears throat> uh, what do you want? Uh, athletics to push it? No, uh, cast the spell. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you're trying to use this spell to wipe the wall, not to try to push the stone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I get the mud off. So step one, yeah. And I believe Sal said he's gonna assist. assist. Yeah. I like this music, by the way. Yeah. Um, the other music I had just wasn't. Uh, wasn't. Uh, you couldn't hear it very well, and it wasn't. wasn't fitting my mood. There. It's like got an ancient space vibe to it. long ago in a galaxy far far away well maybe not that ancient so you can you use that and clean an area of uh, like one cubic foot um, I'm wanting to get it up where I can get my hands on it without touching it yeah you can clean off uh You can clean off. You can clean off that. You, you get you get it clean enough to where you can push on it. You can pretty well. We'll, we'll just say you have pretty well cleaned off the whole stone where, uh, you know, the whole the whole thing is completely uh, exposed. All right. Well, anybody want to help? And as she's saying that, she's kind of putting her shoulder against it and trying to brace herself. So, uh, we're going to say you took another uh, point of acid damage because you still got this goo on your hands. Okay, I'll, I'll try to like, wipe it off on the wall over here. Mine. Uh, which, actually, which, uh, which wall oops. are you wiping it off on? I mean, is there mud covering all these walls? The, the southern wall, the one that you, that, uh, like Lars and, uh, yeah, the, one no, that, the, the one. one that you're by, Darren, is not got this slime on it yeah I like rub try to rub it off on that wall if that doesn't work okay and I'll go I'll go to large and I'll rub it on this that jacket <laughs> okay you, you you wipe it off okay so what do you guys want to do <laughs> uh, I Vachi pulls out her flute and and uh, casts Spartac inspiration on Zarius so you have a D8 to uh, add to your to the next roll of your choosing. Sinclair is gonna. This stone is about uh, six foot tall and three foot wide. Just my height. Well, just our height. <laughs> See, I'll put my shoulder into it, kind of brace for a moment, and. Let's push. Begin to. Maybe. So, who is pushing? Sinclair I am. and 
Zerish. Hey, before you touch that, uh, you, if you want, maybe use the shields, push against the thing with the shields and the way instead of your hands. He cleaned the slime off. Of oh, you cleaned off? Okay, yeah, yeah, never mind. I was too busy trying to clean my hands. <clears throat> so, who, do, who did you say is pushing it? Sinclair and Zerish? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your strength? 16. 17. Um, you guys can feel the rock kind of dislodge or try to a little bit, but after straining and straining and straining, um, it it doesn't seem to budge. Well, you have a uh, yeah. gift inspiration. Does that change anything? Would you be able to do it if we? Uh... It it doesn't seem to budge. I don't think there's any moving it. Oh, well, I'll save the inspiration. Lasts for ten minutes. There's enough room, because uh, it is, uh, it's three feet wide. I figure, you know, you could probably get more hands on it if you wanted to, especially being it's ten feet tall. Yeah, I'll get in there too and help out. Bring in the dwarf. So, uh, what's the combined strength of the people that are helping? 16 like, feet. Base strength? What's that? Like base strength? Yeah. Yeah, your strength. Yeah. 14. Damn. We got, what, a 14, 16, 17? Yeah. And Lars? Can he help? Don't worry, Lars. It's, it's not like driving boats. It's just pushing heavy thing. You should be good at that. Big brain energy. So you guys manage to push. It takes like ten minutes of pushing. It's just going very slow. Um, and you, you notice that this block is actually like three feet thick. That's one thing that makes it so heavy. But you manage to get pushed in enough to be out of the way. Where you can squeeze through there. Ah, well, there we go. Who wants to go in first? I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go. Or Sinclair. I'll go first. First or second? No. Do you want to be next to me or in front of me? Yep. Well, I don't want to step in front of those things because I don't know what they are. Unless they're just pods. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to read something. <laughs> and a giant there. earthquake hits, and you guys are covered in stone and boulders. Narrator, please. Rocks fall, everyone dies. <laughs> Beyond the plug is a small foyer holding three sealed urns to the east and to the west sides. To the south are double doors of bronze, the glyphs worked into their faces. I still have detect magic up. Can I see anything? Um, you do not. Okay. And I, I'd like to make a perception check for any traps, if possible. Um, where are you detecting around? Uh, just these four tiles before the door. Uh, like right here and here. Right here. Oh, you're you're uh, into the room. I'm detecting on these. Okay. So I yeah. roll. Seeing that it's such a small room, Zeris is just gonna stand at the doorway.
click. Um, I, I uh, can read you. The description of these doors here. Oh, I guess I have uh, double bronze doors with glyphs worked into their faces. Um, I would say, let's see, uh, you comprehend languages last how long? Um, one hour. Yeah, one hour. So, you can tell these glyphs are uh, in, in, in omen, they're scribed in omen. These uh, are the glyphs are in the same language as the, well, the rest of the temple. And it says, "Here lies Flaques Abalakas, master of the others, who is like the wind and the night." This seems to be the burial chamber of a uh, of, of someone important to this to these people. Well, um, not one to disturb someone's sleep then. I think I'm going to go this way. <laughs> She's like slowly backing her way out the door now, hearing that happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, I agree. Lars, Lars looks at uh, you yeah, as you come out and he's got a big grin on his face. Unless you think there's riches in his burial chambers. I mean, there could be, uh... We need to destroy the... Do, does anyone know about anything about the gods of this, the Omoans? <laughs> I'd be willing. Sorry, to I, it, but I doubt it. it the, I think the big thing we need to we need to do is figure out who they worship and kind of get rid of that. Is that right? I think the ways to some of you, this. some of you knew what they worshipped. You want to enlighten him? Don't think it was me. It was not. Yeah, me neither. If you recall that they they were speaking of these uh, people that uh, sharpen their teeth to. Uh, to honor their god, who is the vampire god of the underworld named uh, Zatzalaha. Zalaha? Yeah. I don't, I don't think the. Zatzalaha. Uh, Zatzalaha, is that name ring a bell to you, uh, Sullivan? No. Why would it? Okay. Just or whoever whoever has the comprehend language stuff, I'm sorry. Whoever read the uh, list. I just put it in chat. Yeah. <clears throat> right, well we can mark this and come back later if need be. Uh we don't need to bother it, I don't say we not bother. Sounds good to me. Uh, well, off we go. It's hard to read. Really, we can barely see. And the last thing I'd read, would like to do is open up a tomb. Just saying. <laughs> Say again. It's hard to breathe. And it's hard to see as well. And the last thing I would like to do is just walking to a tomb. Well, we definitely need to find out uh, uh, nothing else other than how to fix this air issue. <clears throat> but at least we know that it's there. Guys, I found stairs. I think. 
This staircase goes up for only a few steps, and then it seems to, uh, it seems that the rest of it is filled with clay and stone rubble. She just curses something in Infernal. I know Infernal. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vivace <laughs> blushes. <laughs> She's just saying, motherfucker, in Infernal. Well, that was a valiant effort to not get into a fight. I guess we have to find out what's down the stairs on the other side of the... Uh, well, it's it's either the crypt or the guardian. But I have a feeling that if we excavate the grave, the guardian will not be happy about that. No, the guardians usually do one one of two things: either keep something in or keep something out. And it wasn't really too worried about us coming in, so. Right. It no, we didn't try. It seemed pretty occupied about the the other half of this place. <coughs> but actually, have to go there. So, our options are to go into a creepy tomb. Or to go back and possibly fight the guardian in muck. Is that what what we're all thinking? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean if we throw a few torches inside, we can just uh, Take it on from behind the door. It, it can't really fit in, can it? I have range capabilities, and I can stand there and nothing else hold my sh my shield up. No, I mean he can't even get to us if we just stay on this side. No, because the door is so small. As long as yeah. everyone, you know, make sure that we take turns standing in front of the door, so I have this people that can do things. How do we yeah. know this thing doesn't have anything of its sleeve? I've never seen anything like it. I just... It seems a little odd that something that big just... Petro... I'm a pirate. We typically don't go in these things. And I don't like caves, so... I, I... Look, I'm all for whatever as long as they get out of this place. It's becoming really uncomfortable. But the thing that confuses me is that how it survives here. I mean, the entrance there is blocked. We fell through a hole and there are the in one other door leads down. As he's saying he As he's saying that Zara just kinda slunks to the floor or slunks and sits down against the wall and just takes out water skin. Okay, so we fight, or we fight the guardian, or we go through here and see what's on the other side of this hole. Could be another passageway. Uh, you know, when we're talking are we dig, about, or we dig out stairs, maybe? Do they go up or down? I didn't get good look. Oh, well, they go up, but by the time we excavate, this much rock will just suffocate. Stairs on the other side of the the guardian went down, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't think that's our answer to fresh air. I don't think no. the crypt either, because we're talking about undeath and stuff, so I really don't want to get into the battle so, chambers. How much longer can you uh, talk with the uh, the creature? 
Which way did he say the way out was? Didn't he say this way? He pointed up the in the to the direction that we are in currently. So either it's a liar and trying to get us killed, or perhaps we need to. Uh, I don't know. It wouldn't it know is. that it's uh, collapse. It can't really fit in anyway. It's true. Could not know that the stairs are collapsed. Maybe we need to go back and ask him if there's another way out. Uh, just a moment, and I go all the way over to the stairs and try to see if it's an illusion of some sort. Zaris has taken out um, another rash and just kind of keep trying to keep her energy up. So like you're putting your hand to try to touch the stairs and see if uh, it actually goes through them or not? Yeah, stuff like that. Like, uh, if it's actual the rubble, rubble, or is it's just some kind of a illusion or whatever. I mean, when you touch the rubble and touch the stairs, it, uh, your hand doesn't go through it. It's actually a substantial substance there. Hmm. Well, maybe we need... Maybe we need to dig it out. It sounds like either fight or work. Which is work. Well, the work is fine, but it's gonna take a while. Unlike a battle. Do we have a while? Or can we overpower this? We waste enough time just on the rock and the rituals, I think. Do you want to kill something that could be good? It's protecting either or keeping something in or out of this tomb. Over an hour Why don't we ask it if there's another way out? Other than this. Because it might not know that these stairs are collapsed. Okay. There may be another direction we can go. Okay. By all means, do what you need to do. There's also the Ah, uh, Sorry. He allowed us to get out of there once before. What's to say he won't attack us for the second time? You know, coming back. Uh, that's most likely. So I suggest talking to him from a distance. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about poking my head in the door and asking him just in case he... Uh, turns violent. I think the door comes in, so here, let me open it for you. I go up to the door and I just... Enough to where um, she can slide like half her body in or something if she wants to yell or... So, uh, what did she do? <clears throat> so, um, I think, uh, just Vivace pokes her head through the door and yells to the crayfish that, Ah, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Guardian, the stairway up in this hallway is blocked. Could we, uh, maybe use a, another exit? that you know about? Um... This creature goes... I don't, I've been here when, ever since I was very young and I don't know much about any of the surroundings other than this place here. Um, I think you might try um, the opposite direction So, to the west on the opposite side. Down the stairs. Yeah, yeah she's All referring right. to the west. Comes over here and points points this way. Yeah, south to us, but west on the... Yeah. Does anybody have a piece of paper? Maybe some ink? 
Hmm, I have some parchments and ink. I was going to make a little map. Um, I'm gonna ask it. Um, how do you survive here? It's where do you get food? Does someone take it down here? There's small creatures that uh, live in the mud and things, and I didn't uh, stay uh, dead from that. Uh, and why are you guarding anything here? Is it some kind of a purpose bestowed upon you by someone else? This is this is my this is my home. Don't you guard your home? Uh, well, yes, I just didn't think too much about that. I scatter off. Um, you can push that door open as well, if you like. Yeah. I'll push it open. But with lots of drama and flair, like a CSI. Yeah, okay. <laughs> FBI! As you go in, you notice that uh, it's like a 50-foot long corridor, or probably 30-foot long, I guess. And in some stairs down into some even more muddyish, nasty area. Well, I guess the only way to go is down. Oh, that's just peachy. Uh, I haven't spent many time in the the caves as of late, uh, but as I remember, air quality doesn't get better the further deeper you go into tunnels. No, I, I, I don't think so. Pretty unless, sure the same goes for uh, this as well. You know, unless the miners cut in fresh there. air tunnels farther down. Oh, you... It's, you are from Mirobar, so... Yeah, you know. Usually it wouldn't stay nasty like it is now. Right, that's true. It just makes more sense to go up instead of down. I've, I've never been in inside of cave. So if we, uh, I mean, if, places. <laughs> if we, uh, maybe wanted to, um, open the, open the tomb just to see if we can feel a, a, a difference in the air, um, just to maybe cover all of our options. I mean, not to, of course, not to loot the tomb, but just to maybe pass through it if possible. Do you really want to? I'm just throwing it out as an, as an option. I don't believe going deeper into the temple right now until we have a secure exit is the best idea. We do, we have found stairs that go up, but there's stuff on the stairs. So we could try to clear out the stairs maybe? Or we go through I don't think going down is the answer. We could, we could try to go back to where we were and maybe try to find a way to climb out of where we fell through at. Do we, is there anything on the north wall um, in the big mud room? Have we checked there? Is there another? I don't think we've been over there. I think he's guarding that. All right. Well, then I say we either go through the tomb or I don't know. V, v you you talked to him. Did he say anything about uh, the north side being a place we cannot go? We could always try and ask him. I think he's just protecting that giant rock because it's magic. I think he is the giant rock. Oh, is the giant rock in the middle of the room? Oh, I thought that was... I thought he was the boulder or something. Okay. I was the boulder all along! <laughs> Rock monster! The boulder. Well, we have courses of action. Now we need to decide. Yeah, I say we either... We either go through this door... 
And if we can't, or if there isn't a door there, or we can't go that way, then we'll go through the dim. Right, so <clears throat> see if we can use the door. If that doesn't work, we try to dig our way out. Yeah, I guess. If that doesn't work, we try to dig. I'm saying dig our way out. Now that I think about it, how does it know where's the exit? Where's the exit was? I wonder how long it's been here. He was probably just pointing us in a random direction. To get that to big. To leave us alone. That's, that seems fair. <laughs> Wait, everyone to dig out? Say aye. I mean, I, I could hit this a couple times. Okay, everyone to go check out the tomb, say aye. Aye. This one. Okay, everyone to go deeper into the temple, say aye. And the north room, where we might, uh, in the last one we were at, north wall, check that out, say aye. Uh, I hey. it, it, yeah, I'd rather do that than to okay. smack it away with rocks. It sounds like we have idea. Let's go to North Wall. Just, uh, I mean, this is the third time we're going to talk to this thing. <laughs> Viv, uh, if you will, please just just ask him if you know if there's a direction that we cannot go, and that will probably help us out a lot. One that he'd be very upset to go. Okay. Right now, I just feel like a nuisance. <laughs> All right, and um, Vati kind of goes back into the mudroom and asks the big crayfish, um, excuse me, uh, we were wondering if we might go to the north and see what lies in there. Can, can we do that, Mr. Guardian? Yes. I am not guarding any particular door. I'm just guarding the room. Okay, thank you. Well, that's nice. We don't want to hurt your... Your... Are these more down? Oh, and this is down. Well done.